Hello, Internet. Internet. Big Dave here, and I am Chief. It's Friday, and that means it's time to fire up another free-to-play game here on Big Dave is Cheap. Actually, it's Saturday. Uh, over the last few days, I've maybe been enjoying my vacation a little too much, if you know what I mean, as I make a drinky, drinky motion that you can't see through the internet. But that's neither here nor there. Let's talk about the video on your screen right now. This is Super Monday Night Combat. Super Monday Night Combat comes to us from Uber Entertainment and is available on Steam free-to-play right this very second. Super Monday Night Combat has been featured on the channel before, so if you want to know about the game's systems, how it plays, how it works, all that good stuff, I would direct you to the May 19th edition of the Roundup, the final edition of the Roundup that marked the transition between the Roundup and Free to Play Friday. So if I'm not giving this game the Free to Play Friday treatment, why is it on the channel? Well, this is the very special... Why I'm quitting Super Monday Night Combat edition of Free to Play Friday. Yes, I've put about 200 games into Super Monday Night Combat, about 46 hours of gameplay. And after all that time playing this game through beta and through all of its iterations, I have made the decision, the executive decision, if you will, that it is time to part ways with Super Monday Night Combat. So I'd like to tell you some of my reasoning so that maybe you can understand uh, the qualms that I have with the game and the reasons that I'm choosing to uh, call it a day. My number one reason is probably the only reason I need. In fact, it's my best reason, most certainly. I suck at this game. I mean, I'm really bad at it. Um, I know what I'm supposed to do, right? I, I've watched videos, I've read up, I, I know the things I'm supposed to do with this game. I know that I'm supposed to push my lane, kill a lot of bots, defend the Annihilator, be a team player, not go Rambo and just concentrate on killing people nonstop. I get that idea. I play support a lot. Uh, Defender, you know, Combat Girl, Leo, support, whatever, whatever the case may be, because I'm trying to be a team player, but it, it doesn't always seem to work out for me. I kind of, I kind of equate it to knowing the things that go into a cake, but not knowing the portions that you're supposed to put in. So, for instance, uh, sometimes I put uh, a cup of flour into my cake. Uh, sometimes I put a pound of flour into my cake. Sometimes I put uh, one egg into my cake. Sometimes I put 18 eggs into my cake. Sometimes I put a tablespoon of baking soda into my cake. Sometimes I put the entire tub. What that means is that generally I make a pretty shitty cake. And that is kind of my normal day when it comes to Monday Night Combat. I kill too many bots. I don't kill enough bots. I get to the Annihilator too quickly. I don't get to it fast enough, etc, etc. I just don't know how to make a cake. And I'm probably beating this cake analogy to death, but you'll learn to live with it. So that's a pretty good reason in and of itself, probably the only reason that I would need to quit the game, but I have more. Uh, number two is the interconnection between the players in this game. And you guys who've played other, you know, sort of MOBA style games, League of Legends, Heroes of New Earth, that sort of stuff, you know what I'm talking about. My performance has a huge impact on you and your performance has a huge impact on me. So to say that in my cake analogy, you know, sometimes I make an awesome cake, but yours tastes like shit. And sometimes I make a crappy cake, and yours tastes like heaven. But when we enter the cake eating contest, our team doesn't win because my cake tastes bad or your cake... Okay, that's enough of the fucking cake analogy, but the point is, if you play really bad, you can screw me over on the rare occasion where I'm making a good cake. God damn it, with the cake again. Okay. Look, I'm just... I don't like losing games for other people, and I don't like other people losing games for me. Period. And if that's the case, I really shouldn't be playing these MOBA games. So, number two, again, another great reason why I should stop playing this game. There's also more. I just, I kind of have a couple of little piddly things. I'm no expert in this game. People out there who know the game are probably going to think this is stupid or my opinions are uninformed, and I'm not going to argue uh, with you. <laughs> they probably are stupid and uninformed, but... Uh, the other things that I have are sort of, you know, just general complaints about the game. Number one, uh, I think there's not enough variety. I don't think there's anywhere near enough pros available, and I think the difference between pros is, uh, in some cases, just 
too small. Uh, for instance, the difference between a Carl and an Assault. Now, I know that expert Carl players will tell me that playing Carl is an art, and it's nothing like Assault, and expert Assault players will tell me that playing Assault is nothing like a Carl. Right. Okay, whatever. But if you look at them on the surface, they are very similar. They both have a blasty laser gun or, you know, machine gun, what the hell ever. They have a grenade launcher. They have uh, movement effects in the form of Carl's rocket jump and, of course, the uh, jetpack. You know, they have things that are inherently similar about them with little things to differentiate them. I want bigger variety. I want characters that play in totally different ways. For instance, uh, you know, I do think that Combat Girl and Support are very similar. But Leo is very different. He's a support that plays in a completely different way. They need a lot more of that. They need a lot more differentiation between play styles within the same tier. They need more defenders that play differently. They need more... Uh, you know, they need more uh, tanks. I'm forgetting the damn classes. <laughs> they need more tanks that play differently. They just need more variety in general. They need commandos that play differently. You know, like Wascott. He plays really differently than Spark or uh, the original Assassin. And I know Assassin players would say they don't play anything like the Spark. I know. Okay, I get it. I get that my opinions are stupid and uninformed, but these are my opinions, so there, take it. So where was I? Right, lack of variety, yeah. Uh, the other thing is, and this has been pointed out by other, you know, more highly subscribed and, and paid commentators than myself, lack of microtransactions. Uh, most, of the uh, most of the stuff in this game is fucking overpriced, I'm not going to lie to you. And uh, I think it's ridiculous uh, when pros are like $10. Uh, I don't know if that's common or if they're just modeling that directly after Riot's uh, pricing scheme, but I think it's ridiculous. I think it is, it is totally freaking absurd. I think the the prices on your pro should be super cheap, but all sorts of different cosmetic enhancements should be available uh, far more than there are right now, and uh, those sh those should be the things that are driving your sales. People who want their their character to have a different uh, taunt, people who have who want their character to have a slightly different gun, these are the places you can make a lot of money, uh, and and I really think those are the things that they should. Uh, they should concentrate on. I, you know, I'm not going to spend $10 on one of your pros, I'm sorry. Uh, when Artemis came out, I had absolutely no interest in purchasing her either for uh, for, for in-game currency or for actual paper money. It just wasn't going to happen. Uh, and she is still yet to be on free rotation. I mean, she they changed the rotation, I think, today, and I haven't seen what the new rotation is, but I think that's ridiculous that you come out with a new pro that isn't on rotation for three and a half, four weeks. Uh, that's just getting kind of ridiculous. So uh, more microtransactions with, with visual, more more emphasis on visual customization. Uh, I, they have a great emphasis on visual customization. I don't mean to diminish what they have right now. I think that they have really good options. I just think they need more of it uh, per character to make those characters far more appealing, to make their pricing structure far more appealing. Uh, and a lot more pros, of course. Uh, point number previous... Right. And I think also the, the final thing um, is... Uh, you know what? I forgot my final thing, so fuck it. Let's move on. Um, <laughs> these are the reasons why I am uh, no longer going to be playing Super Monday Night Combat. I will likely come back... Oh, God, I wanted that kill so bad. I wanted that kill so bad. Oh. So I will likely come back to the game, most certainly. I'm, I'm going to give it another chance. I'm not going to give up on it and go away from it. I loved Monday Night Combat, and I think Uber Entertainment is a great group uh, deserving of support. And when they give me something that I feel is worth paying for, uh, I will gladly buy things from them. Uh, you know, I would have bought a, a $5 Combat Girl, perhaps, uh, but not a, not an 8 or $10 Combat Girl. You know, these are the sort of things that they need to get me back as a player, and uh, they're out there, and I will keep a good eye on the game, and eventually I will give it another chance. So, moving on. Let's, what's, been, what's been going on? What's been going on in the world of gaming or in the world of Big Dave? Of course, I made some, uh, some promises to myself, a little list of things I wanted to do during my vacation. How is my list coming along, you might be asking? Well, uh, alcohol has done something to dis, uh, dis, uh, disrobe that list? No. Uh, derail that list. As you might imagine, I've actually had some alcohol today as well, uh, so that's why I'm saying fuck a lot, and uh, kind of occasionally going off on weird tangents, so, uh, uh, you know, I would probably re-record this on any other day, but I think this is some amazing shit that I've got here, so I'm going to keep this uh, for posterity. But uh, 
how's my list going? Well, uh, I played a couple of games. Uh, some of them I'm going to count. Some of them I'm not going to count. Uh, you know, I'm not going to count Gotham City Imposters. Uh, I'm not going to count Bulletstorm. You know, Bulletstorm, amazing. Uh, I love that game. I've heard some people say the PC port is bad, but I haven't seen any real issues with it so far. Uh, maybe some of those pussies out there that get FOV motion sick, and if that's, if that's you, I'm sorry. Uh, it's not me, so <laughs> I'm not sure that it exists. Uh, but I'm sure at one point somebody said that to a kid who uh, had an epileptic seizure when they watched, you know, the trailer for Tempest. But, uh, you know, it's all cool. Um, I, I haven't had any problems with it, so it's not one of those things that I prioritize. An FOV slider, it's got to have an FOV slider. Uh, you know, I do okay in a single-player game uh, with whatever FOV it's locked to. I really don't generally care. Uh, but uh, I've killed a lot of dicks in that game. A lot of dicks have been killed uh, in my time with... Uh, Watch this just hideous murder right here. The entire team comes over with bots and everything to just absolutely destroy me. God. So, uh, yeah, Bulletstorm, loving it. Uh, had a lot, of, a lot of good times with that game. I've played through probably the first chapter. Uh, I have to say that I'm really, really enjoying it. I think that uh, it's, it's a gem of a game. And uh, I really, I really want to see more from those guys. I know that they're doing the uh, Gears of War prequel next. Uh, but I hope that uh, people can fly, get a little bit of... Uh, leeway to do something else in the future, uh, maybe even in the Bulletstorm universe. That would be fantastic. Uh, I did play Braid, which is on my list. Uh, I've completed the first three levels of Braid, and I've 100%ed uh, I've them, gotten the puzzles done and everything. Uh, so that's been super cool. Uh, hang on one second. I'm going to take a delicious uh, water sip here. Mmm. Nothing like a good cold drink of water. So, uh, yeah, Braid is blowing my mind. Uh, I have to say, in the first world, or I guess it's world two technically, uh, in in that first world, uh, when you when you're working on the puzzle and you know you come across that section in one of the levels where the puzzle's in the level, and you can kind of build it and mess with it, and the first time you go by that, you're like whatever, and then uh, there's a puzzle piece there that you just can't figure out how to get. And later on, after you've collected more puzzle pieces, you know, you're pretty much 100% of the world except for that puzzle piece. You can't figure out how to get it. You go back in there and you figure it out. And, you know, it's just... It's jizz-worthy. I mean, it's just... It's one of those moments in games that comes around so often when you're like, that's fucking brilliant. You know, I just want to get inside Jonathan Blow's head and just give a hand job to whatever part of his brain thought that up because it was so awesome uh, when I when I put that stuff together. And then just that idea that the game didn't tell me to do that. It didn't tell me that I could do that. And I figured that out on my own. It was just, it's one of those moments of discovery that is so rare in these hand-holdy, tutorial-driven games and it was just amazing. I still get chills when, when I think about it. And that's what games can be. And uh, I have to say, I've, I've been a stupid dick for not playing Braid uh, before now. You know, I've probably owned that game for two years. And I should have played it a long time ago. So uh, my apologies to Jonathan Blow because I know you're listening. Because when you say the words Jonathan Blow, he has a chip in his brain that tells him that someone's talking about them and feeds him the URL. And uh, he completely and totally uh, it must be a robot of some sort, or at least at least a cyborg. I'm going to go with cyborg. So what else have I been doing? Anything else on my list? Uh, not really. I've, I've worked a little bit on my article for the website on uh, PlayStation Plus, mostly just research. So uh, that's been pretty cool. Uh, but I haven't touched my uh, Do Something Creative uh, project at all. So, uh, yeah, you know, I'm kind of... So I would say I've worked on two of the three with some level of seriousness, Play 10 Games and uh, Play Braid. So pretty happy there. I'm going to give myself a pat on the back for that. Uh, let's see, anything else going on in the world of gaming? Hmm, anything else, anything else? Um, I guess Penny Arcade got themselves a Kickstarter, right? Uh, they got themselves a Kickstarter to take ads off of the page. You know, nothing wrong with that. I thought it was a little weird that, uh, you know, they were super critical of or... or Ben Kachera was super critical of uh, the Ouya and their Kickstarter, uh, only to sort of have his position weakened when uh, his own company turned around and, and put up something of a questionable Kickstarter. Uh, but, you know, I mean, I guess it's not questionable. If people want to pay to take ads off of 
uh, off of that site. I mean, normally you just go with some kind of a membership system, like something that Giant Bomb has. But if you want to put up, put up a Kickstarter and get yourself, uh, you know, a quarter million dollars, cool, do it. More power to you. So I do enjoy Penny Arcade. I don't really read it anymore. I used to read it, you know, far more frequently than I did uh, than I do now. But uh, you know, whatever. Uh, anything else? Well, ooh, yeah, I mentioned that. I think that's an interesting thing. A lot of people are hating on it. And uh, I think it's really easy to hate on something. Uh, it's really easy to be the guy who is saying, this will never work. It's really easy to be the guy who is saying, you are going to fail. Uh, it's, it's really easy to be that guy. So it's really cool that like thousands of people to the tune of millions of dollars have said, uh, hey, you know, this looks promising. Hey, you know, I think this is worth uh, looking at and funding. And uh, I think that's really cool. And, and do we know what the system's going to be or how it's going to turn out? You know, we know what it's going to be. Uh, no, not really. I mean, really, we don't. Um, I hope that it's going to be something great. Uh, I, I, I really think that it's going to be an interesting opportunity uh, because I think it could could prove itself to be a wonderful platform for indie development. If you don't know what the OUYA is, it is an Android-driven uh, console that will hook up to your television uh, that is supposed to have most Android apps available for it. Uh, there is a quote-unquote promise from Notch that it would have Minecraft on it. I think the exact quote was something along the lines of, if they show that this thing has an audience, then it will have Minecraft on it. So you know, their version of that quote was, it will have Minecraft on it. <laughs> but uh, I think that they've already shown that there's interest enough to have Minecraft on it. And Notch uh, is a lover of money. You know, I, I love him. I would never say a bad thing about Notch. Um, but uh, he's a businessman now, after he's earned millions of dollars. Uh, he's a businessman, and he's definitely going to go where the money is. I mean, there's no doubt about that. And I think that's the smart thing to do. And uh, if there is a possibility to expand this to a new audience on the Ouya, uh, then he will do it. Uh, he will absolutely do it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's there. That's happening. That's a reality. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, I hope that it will function sort of as kind of like a, like a light gaming console meets a Roku. You know, I hope it can function as a television media hub and... A, a basic gaming console, you know, with guys like Adam Atomic uh, already uh, saying that they'll put stuff on it, I, I think you've got a good base to build from. You know, you've got a base that is already of, of proven indie developers who are saying, hey, this is something that we're interested in. Uh, we would totally do this uh, if given the chance, you know, we will develop for this for this machine if it becomes a reality. And I think that's a great thing. So I'm, I'm very interested to see what becomes of the Ouya. Uh, and I'll be watching and uh, kind of just... Uh, Maybe adding up my uh, saving up my hundred bucks for when it uh, is officially out and uh, in a functional form. I'd be anxious to see the other half of that controller, as I think many, many people have said. So, uh, anything else going on? I'm really running long on this video. Uh, this is me when I get a little uh, get a little in me. I'm gonna do a lot of talking. That's how I roll, folks. Uh, so uh, I have to say thank you to the people who uh, who jumped on that dude on the uh, Gotham City Imposters video. Uh, I think it was mainly Kurt Dawes that did, but, uh, you know, I, I do that stuff, too. I, I Like I said in my response, I totally grammar Nazi people uh, on YouTube, and I think it's because it's, it's just a fun, trolly thing to do. Uh, so, But the dude was right. The name of the game is Gotham City Imposters with an O-R. Uh, it is acceptable to spell Imposters with an E-R. Uh, it is definitely acceptable to do that, but the name of the game is Gotham City Imposters with an O-R, so he was 100% right. I definitely spelled it incorrectly versus the name of the game, uh, but there is absolutely nothing wrong with spelling it with an E-R. Uh, that has become an acceptable spelling over time. So, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, I did grammar Nazi him back, so I thought that was funny, uh, because he was making one of those classic mistakes, which is it's and it's. Uh, it is difficult. I struggled with it at times, and that's why I know backwards and forwards the difference between uh, it's the possessive pronoun and it's the uh, contraction. So anyways, uh, I think that's going to do it, guys. I really I don't have anything else. Uh, I probably could talk for another 30 minutes, but I think that would just be ridiculous. It's going to take forever to encode this video. 
Uh, so thanks for sticking with me, guys. You know, I'm really enjoying this. Uh, I don't think we're ever going to get the channel up to 200 subscribers, but that's all right with me. Uh, you know, I enjoy doing this, and I enjoy doing it for those who choose to watch. And uh, I will always love the 199 <laughs> that choose to watch. So uh, I appreciate you guys, and uh, thanks for uh, thanks for just being supportive of this uh, hobby that I enjoy doing. All right, guys, I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy.